Welcome to the Fiscal TV Podcast. Hey everyone, welcome. I'm Corey Cortez, here today with our resident expert, Brianna Lee. Hi everyone, I'm Brianna Lee. Looking forward to today's episode on cash validation, cash validation, appropriation control, CVCVAC. Thanks. I'd like to spend some of our time today to go into how CVCVAC will impact departments. Are you good to answer a few questions? Yes, that sounds great. Okay, let's get right into it. What does it mean for a department to be set to CVCVAC control? What this looks like is that when departments are transacting in Fiscal, CVCVAC automatically validates that the department has enough fund cash and appropriation authority to complete a transaction. What happens if they don't have enough fund cash or appropriation authority? If they don't, then the CVCVAC budget check creates an exception. That sounds like an NSF that departments would see today from SEO. Yes. The validation that happened in SEO that departments should have been familiar with will now happen upfront in Fiscal. Are there any changes to the existing SEO NSF process? There are no changes, but the CVCVAC budget check is in addition to that. Okay. Departments should be familiar with NSS from SEO, so let's get into the specifics of CVCVAC and Fiscal. When a department has a CVCVAC exception, where in Fiscal can departments go to see those? Departments can go to view their exceptions using the CVCVAC exception dashboard in Fiscal. What this dashboard is, is a page that shows a consolidated list of errors by exception type, and it also has links to documentation that end users can refer to to guide them on what next steps to take. For the dashboard, can all Fiscal users access it, or do they need a special role? All Fiscal users can access the dashboard, but users that have the proper roles are actually able to drill down to the transaction details and decide next steps to take. For example, if an exception occurred in AP, if the user had an AP role, they'd be able to review the transaction details and make corrections if necessary. For more information on CVCVAC related to roles or anything else, where would a user go? Users can refer to Job Aid Fiscal 461, and they can also watch our CVCVAC Exception Dashboard Navigation video that we have on the Fiscal YouTube channel. In general, we don't want users to have exceptions. So to help them out, where can users go to check their CVCVAC balances to make sure they have enough to complete a transaction as they are transacting in Fiscal? To check their balances, departments can use the Commitment Control page in Fiscal and make sure that they use the CC underscore CV ledgers. When exceptions do occur, who's responsible for fixing it? It depends on the type of exception. What departments are responsible for doing is checking the CVCVAC exception dashboard daily, correcting any department user errors, and resolving any true NSF CVCVAC exceptions. Just to clarify, what are true NSF CVCVAC exceptions? True non-sufficient fund, or NSF CVCVAC exceptions, occur when a department doesn't have sufficient fund cash or appropriation authority to complete their transactions. These are considered valid exceptions, and transactions that have true NSF exceptions will not interface to SEO legacy until they have been corrected by the department. That makes sense for true NSFs. Are there any other types of exceptions? Yes, there are other types of exceptions that departments should be aware of, but they are not responsible for resolving these. SEO and Fiscal are responsible. These exceptions are usually caused due to timing differences. For example, if a transaction had posted in one system but not yet interfaced to the other, or when balances don't match between Fiscal and SEO legacy. 
What should departments do if they see these types of exceptions? If they do see these types of exceptions and it's preventing them from processing their transactions, what they should do is create an FSC ticket and make sure that they add their DOF analyst on that. And as departments are getting exceptions, or if they are, will Fiscal notify them? Fiscal will notify departments in certain cases. They'll notify departments whenever their voucher workflow is reset due to an exception that has occurred during the AP pay cycle. They will also notify the department staff analyst if there's an exception that occurs due to user error. And wanted to remind departments that they do have the ability to check for CBC VAC exceptions themselves using the dashboard. And Fiscal recommends that departments get into the habit of checking the dashboard daily as they won't be notified of all exceptions. Thanks. I know some departments have been using CBC VAC for quite a while. What are the most common CBC VAC exceptions that we've seen so far? Some of the common types of CVC VAC exceptions that we've seen include exceptions that are due to timing differences between Fiscal and SCO Legacy, but these exceptions are usually resolved after the nightly batch process has run. Another type of exception are true NSF exceptions, when departments have no remaining spending authority or RSA available for transactions in either Fiscal or SCO Legacy. The last type of exception are exceptions caused by journal vouchers that were created with accounting dates that were not in the same fiscal year as the original related voucher. Those are some good tips for all departments, and everybody should be aware of them so that they can limit their exceptions. I know we don't want departments building a backlog of exceptions, so how long do departments have to resolve their exceptions? Departments have within a week to resolve their exceptions. The CBC VAC budget check also will reoccur nightly to check if there's any new available fund cash or appropriation authority to clear exceptions. What happens if a department is unable to resolve their exceptions within a week? If departments are unable to resolve their exceptions within a week, then they will receive an email from Fiscal notifying them that Fiscal will be taking action on their department's behalf to either reverse or unpost the transaction. Well, I think that covers the gist of CVC VEC. Yeah, if departments understand those basics, then they should be in a good spot. Okay, well, let's get some more details about CVC VEC that may impact specific departments. I know a few departments are part of the Cash Management Investment Act, or CMIA. How are CMIA departments impacted by CVC VEC? CMIA departments were previously contacted by Fiscal to provide their CMIA appropriations. Fiscal wanted to make sure that those appropriations were correctly configured to track with in the CVC VEC ledger. To clarify, what's track with? Track with in Fiscal tracks that the department has enough fund cash and appropriation authority to complete their transactions, but doesn't prevent their transaction activity from going through. Because transactions that are set to track with shouldn't raise CVC VAC exceptions, they do have the potential to raise errors in SEO legacy due to NSF. So in order to avoid these potential NSF errors, Departments should make sure to process their federal drawdowns in a timely manner. All useful information. For departments that have federal drawdowns, when should they process them? It's up to the department's discretion when they want to process them, but they should time it so that those funds are available when the expenditure incurs. For help determining the timing, they can refer to Job Aid Fiscal 461, and one general tip that Fiscal has is just to always keep federal drawdowns current. Is there anything else that departments should know about federal drawdowns? Yes. One thing they should know is related to AR deposits. AR deposits that use DLC location code need to be reclassified from program 9998 to true programs in order for them to workflow to SCO for approval. Fiscal is working on a future enhancement 
that will be coming to automatically approve these transactions. But in the meantime, the SEO approvers are making sure that they prioritize the drawdown deposits so that they're timely processed and available. That's good. If a department doesn't schedule out their federal drawdown to the ultimate program, will it affect their AP voucher or CVC VIC budget check? It will. If a drawdown is required, departments need to make sure that they reclassify from program 9998 to true programs in a timely manner. If they don't do this, then transactions go into CVC VAC exception and ultimately the payment will be delayed. Is there anything else departments should be aware of? One more thing is that in the commitment control amount page, departments should make sure that they select the correct commitment control amount and select the actuals, recognize, and collect radio button. Thanks for covering federal drawdowns. On another note, many departments use PFA. What should departments be aware of to avoid potential PFA-related CVC VAC exceptions? One of the reasons that we've seen for PFA-related CVC VAC exceptions is due to departments that were not correctly following the PFA interim process. I know that on February 9th, 2021, part of the PFA interim process was automated. Could you give us a summary of the changes? Yes. So as you just mentioned, PFA interim process was automated with that enhancement. And what this means is that PFA transactions initiated by paper transaction requests now interface the same night that they're posted to SEO Legacy. That's great. It sounds like there's going to be some less work for departments. Yes, those are definite benefits from that enhancement. But while we're talking about it, I did want to take some time to give some reminders related to the updated PFA interim process. First one is, I'm sure departments will be happy to hear about, they will no longer have to create GL Journal spreadsheet upload files for this process. An FSC ticket is now only needed for PFA activity from fiscal year 2020 that was posted in Fiscal prior to September 14th, 2020, which was when the PFA interface phase two went live. And lastly, PFA activity from fiscal year 2019 and earlier should be sent directly to SEO SART. There's no need to create an FSE ticket for these. Thanks for clarifying when the PFA interim process should be followed. Where should departments go for more information on the PFA process? For more information, departments can refer to Job 8 Fiscal 440. Is there anything else PFA related that departments should know regarding CVC VAC exceptions? One more thing is that as a best practice, departments should remember to set up federal AR items for their TC30 federal drawdowns. If they don't do this, then the TC30 will post to the default program 9998 and will need to be reclassified out in a timely manner so that transactions don't go into CVC VAC exception. Got it. It sounds like there are some practical things departments can do in Fiscal to not run into CVC VAC exceptions. Exactly. And that wraps up our Q&A. Thanks, Bree, for talking with me through everything CVC VAC. Thanks for having me. I hope departments were able to learn from this episode and feel more confident and be successful with CVC VAC in Fiscal. Just listen to the Fiscal TV podcast.